Hey there, neighbors and naysayers. It's Clint Finney again for another Eastern Ohio Grazing Council web update. Hey, sorry that we haven't been in touch here in the last few weeks. We have been very busy in the office. This is equipped contracting period for Beth and I and all the rest of the NRCS soil and water folks. And we've just been swamped at the office and didn't have a time to, to put out an update or, or do a pasture walk. But the good news is we're going back pasture walking this month. And so we wanted to do one last update before we go pasture walking. So let's get started. I thought I'd talk just a second about what we're looking for with grass this time of year. We talked about leaving the forage or ochre grass and fescue to third leaf stage. We did that in this field. Um, and so what what is it that we're looking for now? And the last three days I've come home and Dad has said, well, they didn't eat nothing. He said, it's not down. We we don't need to move them yet tonight. Well, my answer is it always they always need moved no matter what. Um, if I erred and gave them too big a field and they didn't eat it all, then that's my fault, not theirs. So, but outside of that, our theory this time of year is we just want them to top graze. We just want them to graze off the top leaf. And I'm standing here looking down the fence for a reason, because you can kind of see the difference. Uh, if I pan one way very slowly, and you see that, you say, well, boy, that's not enough. They didn't eat any of that. But then if you look down the fence, you can see the difference between the two. The important point here is, we're just trying to keep it vegetative. We're just trying to graze the top growth, keep it vegetative for as long as we possibly can. Um, we only get these six, seven months uh, of growth to be able to, to graze um, newly grown grass. And we need to make the most of those six, seven months so that we can graze the rest of the year, we hope. And that's one big difference too, and, and I keep in my mind is right now it's totally different. I'm just trying to keep it vegetative. Come August 1st, I want to have everything grazed. I, I don't. I want all the mob grazing pretty much to be over by then, or at least I want enough mob graze stuff ahead of me to get to November 1st. So it's a smaller area. It's not taking up my whole farm. And while I'm grazing that, I've got the whole farm um, grazing or growing for stockpile grass. We've got to do a better job of taking advantage of the days that we are given to grow grass. We can't waste them. We can't waste sunshine and rain uh, during the growing season uh, in favor of the non-growing season. So everything about what we do for grass and grass management should be not wasting those vegetative days, keeping that plant vegetative as long as we possibly can. Just uh saw this as I was coming in. You can see the posts sticking up there. That's a fence that I just took down. It was three strand. I had the sheep on the left side, cows on the right side. And you can kind of see why, because we call the right side the Badlands, because it's very steep, very rough, slips, um, and tends to grow up in Marflower Rose. And we got some Marflower Rose control ahead of us. We've done part of this field last year. We'll do the rest of it, hopefully this year, if it gets dry enough. But anyway, what I wanted to show was the difference in grazing height from one side to the other. Now, granted, the sheep field has had, let's see, one, two, three, four, five days of rest, five days more than the cow side. But it's a stark difference in the grazing height. And I hope you all can see that. But uh, in five days, we've got some really massive regrowth on the sheep side where it's only been two days since the cows were on this side, so haven't really got the regrowth yet, but it, it just shows what we really look for in the spring. If I have my drillers, I want the fields grazed like the left side more than the right side. The reason this is grazed like this is because you can see it's a pathway to get to another field, so they graze it tight because they're going toward that gate, but um, I know that the left side doesn't look like it's grazed. It doesn't look like it's grazed enough. But if you get out there in there, you may find in this one acre field, you may find 10 seed heads, baby seed heads just starting to come out. The rest have all been nipped off. And, and that'll keep that plant vegetative till next rotation. Next rotation, hopefully they'll nip them 10 off, but they'll leave 10 behind and we'll still have 10 seed heads. But uh, hopefully we keep it a little more vegetative this way and we're growing a forage bank ahead of us this way. Take home message is, I know that it doesn't look grazed in the spring when we only graze this much, 
but the regrowth is going to be so much more. And this is something we want to carry kind of through the entire season. If we let them graze too close early in the season, it tends to allow them to overgraze through the rest of the season. Um, Kevin's talked about going out and mowing with a with a disc mower at a four inch height, and it kind of makes that bottom of that plant, that four inches, kind of makes it stemmy and harder and more lignified, I guess. Uh, woody, I guess is the term for it. And that keeps the, the cows from grazing down so low. And, and that's kind of what we want to do with the cows rather than doing it with a mower if we can, or sheep or whatever we're grazing with. But I know it's hard. This is the roughest time of year to graze. It's, it's the time when I make the most mistakes. And believe me, I make them, tons of them. Uh, I got a field right now that one side's not grazed enough. The other side's grazed too much. Should have moved them last night, but it was pouring down rain. And that's just the way things go. So just a little picture of what I like to see. I like to see it just nipped off. This stuff's going to grow so fast. We're going to get back to it. We'll leave that forage bank. We'll get back to it later. That will come in handy later on in the season when things slow down. One question I get this time of year all the time, and it's something that I struggle with as well, is uh, the sorting that we see out there when, when the cows first go out, how much they graze certain patches really tight and certain patches they don't seem to hardly touch. And and I've, I've struggled with that for years and, and how to make that right and how, how to get them to graze more uniformly the entire pasture field. And just happened to be watching a video from Dr. Alan Williams and and Gabe Brown, and, and they suggested that, that we just didn't have the animal impact that we needed to. We, we weren't having, we didn't have as many pounds per acre as we should have to get them to graze that more uniformly. And it's tough to do this time of year, even for someone like me who, who regularly uh, has a very high stocking rate uh, per acre when I'm grazing, it's tough to get those high stocking rates this time of year. And so, uh, Dr. Alan Williams proposed a, a scenario, a way to fix our, our sorting problems or our non-uniformity of our grazing it is to, to, to create a, a really high stocking density for a short duration of, of each day for several days, five to seven days uh, in length. And that will, will tell the cows that they need to go ahead and, and be uniform in their graze and not go and sort and select certain plants. So. I started doing that at our place. Uh, I just built a small paddock, turn the, the cattle into the field, uh, just leave them there for half an hour or an hour, and then go up back in half an hour, an hour, and move them into their bigger field, what will last them for a 12 hour period or a day, depending on what I'm gonna do and whether I'm gonna be home to move them or not. And it seems to be working. It seems to have, have made the cows be more uniform in their selection of the field. Rather than going out and patchy, sort of grazing and, and not getting everything, uh, by doing this, just building a small paddock, turning them in there, making a really high stocking density for that half hour, an hour, and then turning them into the bigger field later, uh, seems to be working. It seems to actually uh, be making those cows graze those fields more uniformly. Just thought I'd pass that along. Some of the rest of you may be struggling with grazing uniformity this time of year. And, and I think this is one way that we can kind of train our cows to be more uniform in their grazing pattern. While I'm out moving the sheep, it's about seven o'clock at night. Um, got one lamb there, got the rest of them going to come with lambs here pretty soon. Everybody's excited. One thing I wanted to show and the sheep are going to chorus in the background is we get a question all the time. How big should my paddocks be? And, and that answer always, it always gets a government answer. It depends. Now there's about 30 ewes in this bunch weighing about a hundred pound. There's 16 fat lambs in here again, weighing about a hundred pound and they're getting ready to start lambing. So you can figure that based on body weight, how many pounds and how many inches and all that that we need. But what I'll show you is one way that I do it without doing math. And those of you that know me say, but you love doing math and I do, but we can make this work for those who are not math inclined. So what I have, try not to make you sick here, by, but I want to show you the best angle. What I have is the field they were in yesterday. This field was, they were in Sunday till Sunday night. So they were in Saturday morning at 10 o'clock. They came in this field and they went out on Sunday at six o'clock. The reason they came over here was because 
they started lambing and they were cleaning the back of the farm and i don't want them back at the farm because there's no houses no nothing close by the nearest thing to them there is dillonville and it's about three thousand feet straight down over the hill so um coyote heaven so we wanted to bring them up closer to the barns and i can pan and show you the barns are right there and we'd be working toward the barns as they start lambing but unfortunately we had this first set of lambs and and we haven't had any more and that happens sometimes we start and it goes great guns and we have tons of lambs and sometimes we start and we get a couple days and then we get another one in a couple days and then all of a sudden bang we get tons of lambs but so what we did you can see my fence daughter with more flower rolls there that's a permanent three strand fence runs down the middle of this field makes these paddocks 263 feet wide uh, the posts are on 32 foot center so that's how i calculate what i'm going to do with my fences so I gave them five posts, not knowing how much forage was in this field and how much we needed to give them. Uh, I, I split it into five posts per paddock, put them in this field. And as luck would have it, it was raining Sunday. I didn't want to move them at 10 o'clock because that gets them off schedule for me to move them again the next day. So I just left them there. And I left them there to figure out whether that was enough or whether it was too much or what. Came up here between the raindrops, 6 o'clock Sunday, and this field is grazed what I consider to be perfectly. First, new spring growth, and I'll try to bend down and show you. New spring growth, just right. Just tipped the ends of the fescue plants. Ate the clover, but not too low. Um, just a perfect graze. So... The way we figure our paddocks here is, and how, you're going to say, well, you left them here for more than 24 hours. How's that perfect? Well, the way we do that is they were in here for 32 hours. Five posts, 32 hours. Divide that out, multiply it by 24, and you get 3.75 posts. I know, most of you didn't want to do the math. What I'm saying is five posts was too much for 24 hours, so reduce it down by one post see how it goes the next day if it's too much reduce it down again if it's too little give them a little bit more if your whole field is is of one height you can do that i mean it doesn't hurt to to figure it out with the animals how much actually needs to be out there and it's actually a good way to figure out backward how many pounds of animal you have out here in the field figure out how much grass you have how many pounds per inch figure out how much they ate in 24 hours that'll give you a pretty good idea how many pounds you've got out there without a scale it's not going to be perfect it's not may not even be close but at least it's a number for you to do but that's how i do my paddock divisions especially with the cows later in the summer i start into a field give them a piece next day is that too much is it too little well I'll give them a little more give them a little less until we get about right and then once the spring flush really hits we're, we're very rarely ever wrong we're going to be right more than not i mean and then your grazer's eye kicks in too and you look at this field and say well this one's a little thinner or this one's a little thicker let's give them a little more let's give them a little less but we're not going to error that bad by doing it i mean we're going to leave some forage behind and that's what we want to do anyway but um just a good way to come up with what size should your paddocks be in and yet another reason for those of you that don't like temporary fence this is the reason why we use temporary fence as i said this this these two paddocks are 263 feet wide they're 1200 feet long so i can make my paddocks bigger or smaller depending on what we need once i put the steers in with these lambs or sheep once they're done lambing we'll go back up so we'll go back up usually it's around five posts that's why i started with five and then work my way down but um just a good way to figure out what size your paddocks need to be and and because i've got temporary fence i can make them smaller or bigger and because i've got temporary fence i can take this all down spread fertilizer spread manure winter feed on it whatever it is i want to do i can mow it all at one time brush all it all at one time i can mow portions of it at one time if i want to so just a good quick lesson on how we size our paddocks i hope that wasn't too complicated but it's really not if you break it down to its bare bits we we just give them a piece of grass and we come back and check on them every couple hours over the weekend we know when it gets exactly right and then we divide it out depending on the hours when you like to do the math that's fine if not give them 24 hours if it's too much make it smaller 
if they ate too little the other way around and just go from there hey little guy i'm not your mama your mama's over there there's your mama People often wonder how we move sheep with little lambs like that. Well, we try not to move them when they're brand new. Uh, but that little guy's six days old today. So he's moving pretty good now. We don't have any trouble moving them once they're that way. Uh, when we start having bunches of lambs, we just don't back fence it every day. Uh, it makes it kind of a pain because i got to take fence down and put it back up. But I, I do. I take it down, let them find their way back to the new grass every day i try to get a big field so that i don't have to move them from field to field when we lay them well that's a wrap for this week's eastern ohio grazing council update if you haven't been added to our mailing list please drop beth or i an email that'll get you email notifications of when we post videos but also our pasture walk flyers and any other eastern ohio grazing council information at this point, I can't say how excited I am, as well as all the rest of the folks involved with Eastern Ohio Grazing Council are to say we are going back pasture walking. We are going back to live and in-person pasture walks. May 27th at 6 p.m., we're going to be going up and visiting Mr. Hours Grazing Operation outside Lisbon, Ohio, hosted by the Columbianus County Soil and Water Conservation District. We do hope to see all of you there. It is going to be exciting to go back to live and in-person pasture walks, discussions, and to see all of you uh, that we haven't seen in over a year. Now, we will be following all the COVID-19 protocols, social distancing, and the like. We have asked you all to bring your own lawn chairs to the event. Uh, things will be a little different, but we will be back to live and in-person pasture walks. Uh, again, I can't say how excited I am that that's going to happen. I can't say how excited we are to, to get together again uh, and also to be doing it in person instead of in video format. Uh, it's going to be great to, to get to go back to pasture walks and, and have discussion led by the folks who are hosting the, the county and hosting the pasture walk uh, and see what they're doing in their county and also on their grazing operation. I guess that leads me to what are we going to do with these web updates? Uh, we've had considerable discussion and had considerable input over the last several months of uh, how much folks enjoyed having these web updates. And quite honestly, when we started doing this, we were just filling the void. We wanted to make sure that the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council folks still got timely grazing information uh, that they were used to from the in-person pasture walks, but would do it in video form. And uh, we've had several folks uh, call in to say, you know, we, we like what you're doing and we hope you keep doing it. And it's Beth and I's hope and, and our plan to go ahead and video our live and in-person pasture walks in the future, get them edited and get them posted to our YouTube channel. Uh, Beth and I have also had considerable discussions about whether we were going to continue to do some updates now and then. And, and I think both of us believe it's still a good thing to do some in-person updates uh, with things that we see in the field, some topics of discussion, uh, some timely grazing information that may not have been talked about at the previous pasture walk and, and may not get talked about or may be too late to talk about at our next pasture walk. So uh, it's our plan to still go ahead and do some, some Eastern Ohio Grazing Council updates from time to time. Uh, I guess my vision is to do some updates uh, in the two week interval between pasture walks we got four weeks between pasture walks to post them about two weeks after the previous and two weeks before the, the next pasture walk uh, as time and information allows. So with that, I'll also say if any of you have any timely updates, topics, ideas, suggestions, or if you've got some video that you'd like for us to take a look at and maybe post as an Eastern Ohio Grazing Council update, we would be glad to do that. We'd also be glad to have those topics, discussions, ideas for pasture walks in the future. Uh, I think that's the vision for, for what we want to do as far as the, the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council web updates go. Uh, I think we're going to be glad to go ahead and post those pasture walk videos uh, just for those folks who can't attend our live and in-person pasture walks. And we'll see what the future holds as far as web updates and things. I can't say again how excited I am to go back to pasture walks. I'm sure the rest of the Eastern Ohio Grazing Council uh, would echo that sentiment. 
we're going to be glad to see all of you and, and have live and in-person discussion and see where that discussion takes us on the topics of grazing and livestock in eastern Ohio and what we're seeing on our own farms. So with that, I hope to see you May 27th at 6 p.m. at Mr. Hours Grazing Operation. Uh, there's going to be the flyer coming up here after this slide, just giving you the, the other information about the pasture walk. And I'll say, we'll see you next time. <laughs>